everyone for coming. My name is Kate Simmons. I'm the gallery director for the Alexander Gallery. I really am excited to um, invite you and, and share this exhibition of work by Portland-based artist Ralph Pugai with you. Um, paintings from the perspective of dog poet Pepper Meadows, so thank you very much. Ralph is a Portland-based artist, and I am going to read because there are so many wonderful things that Ralph has been a part of that I want to make sure to get them right. His work has been exhibited nationally and supported by numerous awards, including but not limited to the Betty Bowen Award, the Oregon Arts Commission Individual Artist Fellowship, and a Rauschenberg Residency. So please join me in welcoming Ralph Pugai. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Um, thank you all for coming. There's a lot of people here. Wow. This is incredible. And thank you to Kate like, for inviting me to do this exhibition. Like, I didn't know how beautiful this space was. And so, you know, like putting this show together was really interesting. You know, it's like I, I wanted to do this show with Kate because um, I went to Portland State University for school where Kate went. And I saw Kate's work um, while I was going to school there. And I found it to be very inspiring. And so it's like when she invited me, I was like happily, I happily agreed to it because um, I wanted to catch up with her, but also like um, just kind of like I, I trusted that it's like we would build this exhibition together really well. Um, and uh, looking at the exhibition now, it's like I feel very happy with it. Uh, but I guess to start, I would say that this exhibition was built. Um, thinking about the setting of a community college in mind at a gallery. Like, I started out my career um, as an adult, like, in community college as well. Granted, it's like I didn't think of myself as an artist then. Like, I was exploring different majors at that time. Um, but I, the, as you can see, like, the exhibition is comprised of paintings. Like, all of the paintings were selected from a range of, like, coming well, being created between 2013 and 2017, I think. And then uh, adjacent or like right next to the paintings are these uh, ink drawings uh, with text in them. Um, a lot of the, well, so the poems are not mine. Uh, they were written by a friend who writes from the perspective of uh, dogs. Um, and she goes by the pen name of Pepper Meadows. And uh, the reason why I did that was thinking about ways to create an exhibition that could be fun, but also educational. And I had to like really think about my experience of going to community college and being exposed to art for the very first time. You know, um, I went to, well, before going to college, like I went to high school in the Bay Area. But before that, I was, uh, I, you know, I ended up moving from the Philippines to the US when I was a teenager. And so my exposure to art back when I was living in the Philippines weren't necessarily within like the arc of like the art historical canon, but really through like Catholic reliquaries um, and imagery. And so I think that really informs my work. But to go back to uh, Pepper's poems, um, I was, I had these like uh, I had this practice of like drawing um, on newsprint with ink that started out in 2018 uh, when I went on this residency on this island in Florida um, where uh, there was a pool and you know that I feel like having access to that really kind of like opened me up to like accessing painting not through like your uh, fingers or like your wrist, but really like through your elbows and your arms. Swimming just kind of like allows you to kind of like integrate that as part of your regular experience. And so that was like a revelation to me that like I continued to adapt into my practice. And um, granted like these, these drawings are on newsprint, like the, the dog drawings. And I have an affinity for, um, for pit bulls too. Um, I've adopted a couple of like pit bulls, and they're just like the sweetest dogs, but they're also kind of like marginalized within culture. 
And so it's like, that's something that I feel was resonant to me. And so it's like, along with like other drawings of other things, like a recurring thing have been like these pit bull drawings. And because they're on newsprint, like sometimes like I think that, oh, nobody wants to show these. And so when Kay asked me to exhibit here, I was like, oh, this is the perfect offer opportunity to like show these drawings. And then thinking about the context of a college, I was thinking, oh, um, Pepper's poems would probably be a really good way to like introduce people that maybe don't have like, aren't exposed to like art that much to come into a space and like really think about, well, experience a way of like seeing art from a perspective of a dog, which would then open them up and in an unguarded way to really think about their own perception of looking and observing things and like putting things together. Um, and so it seemed like a really good fit to have these drawings be part of the exhibition. So I just asked Pepper to uh, write poems based on how she would see dogs um, either interacting or like experiencing the paintings. And I'm so glad that she happily agreed because some of these um, poems, I just feel such, well, I feel like they're really interesting. Like I wouldn't have thought that she would write poems in the way that she did. Like the one over there I thought was really fascinating because um, I think Pepper just saw that painting over there, um, the mermaid painting, not the way that I saw it. The way that I saw it was that it would be a painting of a mermaid that is crying and that the crying would then propel that mermaid into moving through water but it also talks about like ways in which like, oh, the things that are coming out of us are also things that we're absorbing into our bodies, like water, right? Um, and I like painting things that kind of have that like circularity to it. Um, but the way that Pepper thought about it was that this mermaid is in an aquarium, which I just love. Um, I wouldn't have like put those two things together. I think having it framed or like that particular painting being framed, like definitely probably informed like Tupper's perspective of it. And so, but I'm you know telling you this just as an example of like the way that um, I process through work. Yes. Is Pepper Meadows also Filipino? No. No. Okay. Um, but. I, I guess I'm kind of wondering why, um, who, uh, why did you ask the question? Oh, I was just wondering if these were translated from a different language. Oh, gotcha. No, just like, uh, well, I guess it's translated in this, like, Pepper is like invoking the perspective of a dog. Yeah. But there's also the impossibility of that that I find really <laughs> interesting. Like, how can you think, of, like, you're not, you're just not going to get it, right? Um, and so like, I, I like those moments where it's like, like, I guess I would say that a lot of these paintings kind of like have that experience of tension, but like not necessarily understand, like yeah. the tension's like not quite that literal, you know? And like, that's always what I'm looking for. Um, but what was I talking about? Sorry, the mermaid painting. <laughs> yeah, um, so that would be like an example of like the way that like, you know, the way that I process through works. And so um, I guess um, a lot of my work is like very narrative driven and sometimes um, like they're a reflection on life or like a reflection on like the way that words then translate to images or like ways that you can use wordplay to generate images but then some of them are quite allegorical and like um, I think it's really informed by the way that I've grown up around images like a lot of central compositions a lot of melodramatic moments a lot but also a lot of like oh like what's that person doing like I, I like using um, befuddlement as a way of generating attention value for the work that allows people to think through things Maybe, or like, maybe that's like a projection. Um, but 
a lot of them too is about like learning how to paint. Um, I started painting, well, I, I had learned how to paint in college observationally, but it wasn't until graduate school that I started learning how to paint uh, without a representational source. And so it's always been like a puzzle building kind of experience. And so, um, and I guess I say that because it's like one thing that I've learned that might be good to impart to young students is that uh, grounding yourself in like your own self-education or like learning or like trying to tap into your like own curiosity is really important in terms of like making work that takes a long time to make because if you're already doing things over and over that you already know how to do, it gets boring. And um, then before you even finish, you've already like lost interest in the thing. And now like the, the goal is just to finish the thing as opposed to like feeling like you're being enriched or like feeling like you're in dialogue with the thing that you're making. Um, and so this would be a good example of that where um, in this image, uh, I think when people look at this, they see the figure in the middle is either like having parts that are either coming in or like coming out. Um, but I just, I guess I was trying to figure out a way to like create an image that implies that this person is coming back home, but the way that he's coming back home is like through rebuilding himself from these fragments. And his family's kind of freaked out by it. Um, but um, there's also like, I guess like reflections that are quite allegorical within the works. Like um, in the case of this painting, I was thinking about uh, the nature of like masking and the way that we put on masks is like we perform public lives and how exhausting that can be sometimes and how literally like to go back home sometimes after performing in a public way or like performing our public selves literally feels like we're trying to piece parts of ourselves back together into like a whole person. Um, and so, but like, you know, I'm not trying to use paint as a way to like create a message in that way. Like I think that I need the message to fuel me to create the work, but ultimately I just enjoy people having their own interpretation of the work. Um, so yeah, like I would say that a lot of it has to do with like trying to teach myself different way, different methodologies or techniques for painting but then like also grounding that and trying to figure out how to create something that feels like it has a message, but it could also not have a message. Um, and I think that openness like makes it more fun and like enjoyable to like make these things. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you all. Do you have any questions? Please.